Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I thought that I would show you what I'm going to be using for recording my 2.8 Blender video editing series and any other tutorials that I may decide to do after I get started with that. Uh, one of the things that has changed since I did my last uh, tutorial series, uh, I think in 2015, is the software that I use. Now, I am a Linux user. I, I, I do use Windows, obviously, on a, on a regular basis, and even a little bit of Mac. Um, I do IT and stuff like that, so it's kind of hard to really separate myself from uh, Windows, and I'm not a hater, but I have always uh, made my main platform Linux, and so I'm always trying to figure out how I can set up things to work on Ubuntu, I'm currently using uh, the flavor of uh, distribution of Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. And uh, I am currently using, as you can see over here, uh, OBS Studio, which is an open source uh, desktop recording software that works on all the major platforms, Mac, Windows, and Linux. And as far as I can see, it pretty much has uh, all of the same features. Now, what I want to show you guys is how I'm actually going to be uh, setting up all of the, the, the filters and the configuration. Uh, maybe you guys can have some input. Um, also, uh, definitely go to obs.org, uh, I think is what the website is, uh, and check out the software uh, yourself. It's a really great kind of all-in-one uh, solution for, for, for creating tutorials. Um, so let's get started by going over down on the right over here and going into the settings um, and we're going to see how I have things set up. Uh, the most important things on the left side for people who are just doing recording to a file on their computer is going to be the output section uh, and the audio section. And you can see in my audio section that the audio device that I am using for recording is a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 analog. Um, this is a device that is used for people who are like guitar players, singers. Uh, I, I've had it for a couple of years. Uh, I've recorded obviously music with it. It, it's, uh, it allows me to plug in like, uh, like, uh, microphones like this, uh, uh, AKG Perception 220, uh, that I, I bought many years ago, probably even before I bought the Focusrite. Um, and, uh, so it gives me a little bit, uh, there's a condenser microphone, gives me a, a lot clearer sound. Now, the problems that you have in the room, uh, I can't really change this room around um, to kind of dampen the audio. So what we're going to do instead is uh, we're going to use filters. But first, let me actually show you what I'm using for output uh, in the settings. Um, and there's been a little bit of a debate over how I should do this. Now, the way that they actually have things set up in OBS Studio is they have the tabs across, across the top, which are going to set how things uh, will encode and, such like, and, and things like that, depending on what type of thing you're doing. So I'm going to be doing recording because this is going to record to a file. Uh, if I were streaming to YouTube or to one of, or Twitch or one of the other streaming uh, services, uh, I would set different settings here. Now, because I'm going to be editing this, uh, the stuff that I'm recording with um, Blender, I want to make sure that um, I use the highest quality settings uh, as possible. Um, so I, I'm actually, uh, well, I'm using a, a container format of MPEG-4, and I'm doing a video bitrate of 20,000 kil, um, kilobits per second. And I set the keyframe interval to the U2 recommendation of 2. Um, I do believe that when it comes to editing, the keyframe interval um, will actually increase the performance if it's of, of editing, of, of uh, kind of uh, uh, going over the video, if the interval is lower. Um, so if you have a big interval, uh, you may actually notice that you're getting a little bit more choppy, uh, uh, response in, uh, in Blender or other video editing programs, but I'm setting it to two because that's the YouTube recommendation. And I feel like they probably know better than me <laughs> about what things should be set to, but maybe that's only what we need for the final, um, video. I don't know, but we'll start there. Anybody has any recommendations on keyframe interval and why, uh, I'd love to hear it. I have my own ideas. Uh, I'm using the libx264 uh, default encoder. Now this was something that um, I, I, I've been kind of playing around with using the NVEC uh, H264. 
So the thing is, if you're using a, uh, a an NVIDIA GPU, then you have access to doing hardware encoding when you're recording with OBS. And I initially started recording with NVEC because it was getting my CPU, uh, it, it was reducing CPU performance significantly when I was offloading um, all of the encoding that I was doing of the desktop. Um, but I've noticed that I was getting artifacts um, when recording, and I don't like that. So that meant that I, I have the CPU, uh, I have enough CPU that I can uh, do the, uh, ha leave it on the default setting of live at x264. But maybe some of you, if you have any input on um, how to deal with artifacts and using NVEC uh, h264, h264 um, that, <laughs> that might be helpful. Um, but I'm going to stick with the processor heavy uh, default of uh, the LibX264 encoder. And I am going to use AAC uh, with my uh, with this stream and with a 192 kilobit per second um, setting. And I think that that's uh, going to be sufficient. When I go into the audio section, uh, I just leave everything here the same. And I go into the audio section over in, in the tab on the left. Uh, I left the sample rate to 44.1 kilohertz. Um, and even though I'm using a stereo device, I don't really see the benefit of, of recording anything uh, in stereo. I think it only just actually just, if you've recorded in stereo with OBS, it will just throw it on one, one ear. Um, I want to have my audio go to both ears. I don't know. Um, so I'm leaving it set to mono. Uh, that seems to sound the best to me. Um, and uh, everything else here, I think it was just the default. It's going to depend on what your, uh, what you are, your configuration of your computer is. So that's how I have things set up over here. Um, now, you'll notice that you can see the levels of my, uh, my mic at the audio capture device also. On Linux, it's going to use also to, uh, it runs all the audio through that. Um, but for your audio device, you're always going to have this gear next to the volume indicator. Uh, right now, I'm trying to keep my levels, by the way, um, in the yellow. Uh, I don't want it to go into the red. You're going to, I was going to start cutting it off. So I actually turned down my, my audio in, until it got to the point where it was just going to the mid part of the yellow when I was talking. Or So that's, that's a pretty good idea, I guess, and uh, to do it that way. And we'll go to this gear over here. And when you click on that, you go to filters you'll see that I'm using three filters on my voice. So right now, even though I am listening to myself in real time, the, the recording that I'm making is going to apply noise suppression, a compressor, and a noise gate to that audio. And what these things are going to do are, is they're gonna eliminate things that are happening in the environment around me. For example, over uh, this way, <laughs> I have a um, computer that has a fan blowing this way. And if, you, if I don't kind of eliminate th that audio, you hear this buzz in the background that's continuous. So the noise suppression will actually kind of pull out some of the, um, the background ambient noise, just leave my voice. Uh, and that's basically what these other two things are going to help with. I use the default settings with the compressor. Um, I don't think I changed anything. On the noise gate, I used, uh, I think I changed the open threshold to negative 29 decibels. Um, based on just seeing what other people were doing. Uh, and I turned down the suppression level from negative 30 to negative 20 decibels because it just, the thing is, as you actually start making it more, uh, taking it more to the left over here uh, and making it a larger negative number, is that right? Yeah, making it a larger negative number, uh, it will start to cut off your voice and stuff like that. So, um, I found that negative 20 decibels seems to be the best option for me. So it was set to negative 30. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, so everything else here I think is the same. Um, and that's pretty much uh, what I'm doing. Uh, I, I have it recording a camera. Um, I love OBS, how you can just do stuff like, I can just do transitions and it just pulls it right into the video. This is just cool stuff. Uh, this software has made, uh, making tutorials just a dream by comparison to what it used to be. I used to have to layer all kinds of different things in on my uh, Linux installation uh, in order to and do a screen capture in order to get everything working the way that I like. 
Uh, some people may, may still like doing it that way, but I just like the ease of use of, of OBS Studio. So we got right here, we have my camera, we have the desktop, and uh, we have the audio device, my, uh, my AKG Perception mic. So uh, that's how I'm setting things up for my tutorial. If you guys have any input or you have any, if you even think it might be wise for me to do a more in-depth uh, tutorial on using OBS Studio, um, I might consider doing that if there's enough interest. But until then, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.